Gail Trotter, a conservative voice for you, right inside our nation's capital. Legal and political analysis. Gail Trotter, hear the truth from right inside D.C. It's Gail Trotter, stomping through the swamp for you in heels. Now, The Gail Trotter Show. Hi, I'm Gail Trotter, host of Right in D.C. I'm going to talk about the State of the Union. I have seen many states of the union over my lifetime, and I truly believe this is the best state of the union that has ever been delivered by a president in my lifetime. And I was so encouraged by the message that President Trump shared for all Americans. He hit so many high notes. He talked about the accomplishments of his administration. But the thing that really got me in the gut were the stories of great Americans that he shared. Uh, we started off with a story of Tony Rankin, who was uh, uh, addicted to drugs and his whole life fell apart, lost his family, lost his home, and he had no hope, but he was able to turn around his life. And I think it reflects so well on the Trump administration that they are doing so much to try and help the scourge a drug addiction in this country. And it was really encouraging to see someone who was able to overcome that difficulty be highlighted at the State of the Union. Uh, President Trump also introduced the interim president of Venezuela, Juan Guaido, and that generated tremendous applause from the assembled group at the Capitol building. And I just want to share with you the words that President Trump spoke after he introduced Juan Guaido. Socialism destroys nations, but always remember, freedom unifies the soul. And that is exactly the message that we want the President of the United States giving, particularly when we see socialism resurging and young people who didn't live through the Cold War, who don't understand the pernicious effects, the murderous effects of socialist and communist regimes, to have President Trump speak so firmly on behalf of freedom and against socialism, and to do that by bringing a real hero for the Venezuelan people, Juan Guaido, to be highlighted to the nation and to the world and, and to communicate a message back to the corrupt government of Venezuela is an excellent platform for that to occur in. We also saw, I think, what was my favorite story of the State of the Union. Ian Lanafier is an eighth grader, an impressive young man. He wants to become an astronaut. He wants to join the new branch of the American military, the Space Force, when he's old enough to do so. And I was just blown away by that story. And then it got better. I mean, President Trump is nothing if he is not a showman and he understands the power of a story and the power of inspiration. And Ian had also brought his great-grandfather with him to the State of the Union. And his great-grandfather was one of the last living Tuskegee Airmen, the black fighter pilots who are such American heroes. And President Trump elevated his military rank on the day of the State of the Union. And he was there and he's 100 years old and he kept getting so many rounds of applause and every time he would stand up and I just think we all as Americans can be so proud of the sacrifice of our military families and to have this man be there and not only inspire me but also inspire his family and his great grandson to want to serve in the military when he's old enough, I think is just a beautiful American story that is uniquely American that is so fabulous that President Trump wanted to highlight. We also saw Janaya Davis, who is a young girl who wants to have the same educational opportunities that other citizens of America are afforded, and she can't because her family does not have school choice. And this is something that the Republican Party has hammered for years and years and years, that it's just not right that children from disadvantaged neighborhoods or children from lower income families can't have the same educational opportunities 
as all American children. And there's an easy fix to that. We believe in competition. We believe in the power of choice. And for families like this, they should be able to have school choice vouchers so that they can take their children out of failing schools and put them into schools that deliver results for these children and give them the opportunities that they deserve as American children. We also saw a really moving moment when uh, President Trump recognized the I, I'm, words fail me to describe how much impact Rush Limbaugh has had in this country. He is first and foremost an entertainer. He will say that himself. He's a radio guy. He's always loved the power of radio. But he was recognized by President Reagan as the leading conservative voice in America. And he had a terrible diagnosis recently. And so many people were sad, devastated to hear this because he has been such a beacon of support for conservatives when prior to Rush Limbaugh, essentially there was a, a monopoly on information from three big networks, and he was really at the vanguard of this alternative conservative media. And I, I think everyone was shocked when Melania Trump, the first lady, presented Rush Limbaugh with the Presidential Medal of Freedom during the State of the Union. I mean, what a dramatic moment. And you could see Rush Limbaugh covered his face and he was just overcome with emotion. And what a brilliant moment. And I don't wanna give the haters any time, but certainly there was a lot of really terrible things that were said about Rush Limbaugh. But I think people of good judgment and fair values would understand that that was a really unique special moment for someone who's uniquely American and part of the democracy and the political process that we treasure as Americans. We also met for the first time Ellie Schneider, who was born at 21 weeks and six days. And President Trump used her introduction to make the point that he's asking Congress for $50 million more in neonatal research. And he also talked about late-term abortions, trying to end late-term abortions. And this was a very important part of the State of the Union where the Republicans jumped up and they were so happy that they have a president who wants to push this forward because that's not always been the case. And yet at the same time in the chamber, we saw the Democrats sitting on their hands. And I would say there's no more stark revelation of the Republican Party being the party of life and the Democratic Party being the party of death and the party of destruction. And it was just a revealing moment for so many people across America who favor life and, and love babies and want to make sure that every American, no matter what stage of development, is given the ability to live and to have the opportunities that God has given them. So that was a really powerful moment as well. And we also uh, saw Jody, who was Rocky Jones's brother, who was killed by an illegal criminal alien. And President Trump talked about a bill that would allow families of victims of illegal aliens to sue sanctuary cities. And that was a really powerful moment, something that President Trump has been consistent on from the time when he was candidate Trump through his election. And he is working on behalf of the angel moms and the families who have victims of these illegal criminal aliens. And we also saw, uh, the victory lap of President Trump talking about the 187 new federal judges that he has nominated and Senator Mitch McConnell as Senate Majority Leader has shepherded through the confirmation process, including two Supreme Court justices. And I'd like to throw up on the screen for you this great gif of uh, Justice Gorsuch looking at Justice Kavanaugh and they're just smiling and nodding and happy. And so that's yet another opportunity where President Trump has delivered on the promise that he made as candidate Trump. And I think what was one of the absolute saddest moments of the State of the Union, I followed this story very closely. Kayla Mueller 
was an, a human, humanitarian aid worker. And I'd just like to quote the, what she wrote that President Trump quoted in the State of the Union. Kayla wrote, some people find God in church. Some people find God in nature. Some people find God in love. I find God in suffering. I've known for some time what my life's work is, using my hands as tools to relieve suffering. In 2013, while caring for suffering civilians in Syria, Kayla was kidnapped, tortured, and enslaved by ISIS, and kept as a prisoner of al-Baghdadi himself. After more than 500 horrifying days of captivity, al-Baghdadi murdered young, beautiful Kayla. She was just 26 years old. And it was quite an emotional moment when the cameras went to her mother and father, and her father held up a picture of Kayla. And it just gives me chills to think about the pain that she underwent and her family continues to undergo to this time. And for all the people on the left criticizing President Trump for taking out al-Baghdadi, they should have to answer to her family because people like that who want to wage war on such gentle, innocent souls as Kayla, they deserve to be taken off the field and not allowed to hurt anybody anymore. And President Trump has made a strong commitment to that. And I liked uh, something else that he said in the State of the Union relevant to that. He said, our message to the terrorists is clear. You will never escape American justice. If you attack our citizens, you forfeit your life. And so I think this goes into the larger idea of the Republican Party being the party of life, that they value American life, human life so much that if you decide that you want to murder Americans, then you are forfeiting your right to continue to do that. And uh, he also addressed another military family at the State of the Union, a young boy named Gage and his mother Kelly, whose husband and father Chris had been killed by one of the roadside bombs provided by Iranian a revolutionary guard chief Soleimani and the cameras went to Kelly and Gage and I took a screenshot of the moment because the young Gage looked at his mother and he was trying to make sure that she was okay and so even though he's a young boy he has taken on that role of honor and respect and um, protection of those he cares about. So what an inspiration that family is too. Uh, we also had um, a, another military family, Amy Williams and her daughter and her son. And I took a precious screenshot of her son leaning up against the balcony in the Capitol building. And President Trump was talking about her husband serving overseas. And then he had a special surprise where her husband walked out. And I couldn't help but think about the family of Kayla Muller and the, the um, other family whose husband was killed by Soleimani providing the roadside bomb, that their loved one was never going to walk back into their lives again and how painful that must be. Um, so it's so inspiring to have a president and an administration who wants to make sure that we protect lives and we protect American lives. And that was something he strongly communicated in his State of the Union. Briefly, another exciting thing about the State of the Union was he went through all of the good news of this administration. And I'm gonna link down below to the text of his speech as delivered. And I'm gonna link down below to the good news of this administration. We're talking about the economy, the low unemployment rate. We're talking about the trade deals that have been made. We're talking about educational freedom that this administration is putting forward. Immigration, healthcare, life and liberty. He is a fierce defender of the free exercise of religion under the First Amendment. He made reference, short, a brief reference in the State of the Union about the Second Amendment and how he will protect your Second Amendment rights. 
He talked about American leadership in the world and how that has been restored. And we contrast that with the prior administration where it seemed like there was almost an effort to make America less prominent on the national stage, less influential, to really prioritize global elites and international organizations over the rights of American sovereignty. So that is a welcome, welcome relief. And we also saw a talk in the State of the Union about the judges. And as a lawyer and a person who believes in the Constitution as written and believes that we should have a judiciary that does not try to insert their personal policy opinions through the bench, it is a great relief to see the types of judges that President Trump has nominated and the Senate has confirmed. My final reflection on the State of the Union is that it has red-pilled so many Democrats. If you were watching the C-SPAN coverage of the State of the Union, so many Democrats were calling in and saying this was it. They were done with the Democratic Party because they could not believe the inability of the Democratic Party to applaud these unique American stories and to sit on their hands or to scowl or look at their iPads or walk out of the room. And I think that there was no moment that exemplified that better than when Nancy the Ripper decided to take this beautiful speech that President Trump had written and delivered on behalf of the American people and destroyed it. She ripped it up. And she, when she did that, she ripped up the names of Kayla Mueller and these military members who gave their lives so that we all could have the fruits of liberty. She tore up the name of Charles McGee, one of the last Tuskegee Airmen, and his great-grandson Ian, who wants to give his life in service through the Space Force when he is old enough. And I think when you look at the contrast between the Republican Party, which is the party of life, and the Democrat Party, which has decided to become the party of death and the party of destruction, then you can understand why this might have been a clarifying moment in the history of our republic to see such a stark contrast between the attitude and the policies of the Democratic Party and the attitude and the policies of the Republican Party. So we're gonna keep reporting and talking with you about all of these developments in Washington, D.C., and I hope you will give your comments down below in the comment section. Did you think that this was the best State of the Union that you've seen in your lifetime? Do you agree with me? And what was your reaction to Nancy the Ripper deciding to tear up the names of all of these amazing American heroes. I'm Gail Trotter, and you've been watching Right in D.C. Thanks for listening to The Gail Trotter Show, Right in D.C. Be sure to sign up for her mailing list on her website, gailtrotter.com, and also follow her on Twitter, at Gail Trotter, as well as on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe now, it's easy, and listen to her show on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and other podcast platforms. Thanks for listening. Share the truth. Share The Gail Trotter Show. You can handle the truth.